Good morning, Mr. Stone. Hello. And thank you for dedicating your time. So we are here to talk about the ultimate cut of Alexander. It is available on Chile. So why three cuts and uh, what is the difference between the other? In 2014, I went back because I was really still, it, it took analysis. I mean, this it's a complicated story and I wanted to get the relationships between Alexander, his mother, and his father accurate to the point where it would match the outer journey that he was taking from Greece to uh, mm -hmm. Asia to uh, the Far East and to India. Yeah. And the outer journey and the inner journey were to be aligned for me. Yeah. And that was very important. But I think we missed it in the originals. So I think in this yeah. last version, the ultimate cut, which is what I called it because it was not the final cut, what else can you call it? The ultimate cut. Yeah. It's of three course. hours. It's shorter. It's 206 minutes. It's three hours and 26 minutes, as opposed to three hours and 34 minutes, which is the final cut. So the ultimate cut is shorter. It's three hours and 26 minutes. And that's what you have on, I hope you have, on Chile in <laughs> Italy, because I think Italian people understand the movie. I really do, because I, that's when I, my first, even the theatrical version back yeah. in 2004, was well, was well received in Italy and actually made some money, Which according to the uh, Warner, Warner Brothers distribution chief. So I was happy, but to me the movie is one of the most important spectacles I've done in my life, and I wanted it to be understood. And I, I feel I failed in the original version. The 2007 version was better, no question, than the original 2004. But the 2014 is the... Most enjoyable. Is the, is the one that I think, there are flaws, I, I, but I, it's the best I could do with all the footage that I had. Oh, the movie brings me back. It was a very emotional experience, you know, and I, I really think people should see the uh, movie again, hopefully widescreen at home, big a screen as possible, because it's beautifully shot. The emotions in the movie, I threw everything I had into it. Some of the critics were very mean, but frankly, the first version, the theatrical version, was rushed, and it's my fault because I, when we financed the movie, we did it with uh, independent money, mostly from France, mm -hmm. Germany, Italy, mm -hmm. Europe, and we, to, because it was a subject that was about homosexuality, yeah. about uh, actually a, a relationship with a eunuch, which you could call it a, 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 tr a third gender, because <laughs> he had his, one of his most significant physical relationships with a eunuch. So, in other words, we have a, a, f a relationship with a female, male, female, yeah. male, male, male eunuch. And uh, on top of that, yeah. there was this hint of incest with the mother, very strongly. A very and I sexual, think the Italians yeah, can understand that. kind of relationship, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a very strong relationship. And that's why I think Alexander, in a way, was running away for, from his mother. Her manipulation. Well, because she was accused of killing his father in yeah. this terrible yeah. story. Yeah. But she was, at the time, suspected of being, let's say she didn't do it, but we don't know for sure, but what she certainly was happy that he died, and she made no bones about it. She crowed about it. So, uh, I mean, Alexander had a lot of problems with his mother and his father. They were strong people, both of them, dominant people. And you have to keep in mind that when Alexander, when his, when his father was killed, Alexander, he just had a new baby, a yeah. boy, with a new uh, wife, yeah. which was allowable at the time, that boy was destined to become king so because the people did not trust his wife, who was an, uh, she was not a Macedonian, so they were going give to the, the give the crown to the, uh, to the son, the new son. So there's a lot of motive yeah. uh, for Alexander's mother to act, to get, make sure that he becomes king one day. Do you think that there is uh, there are still big compromises like in situations like this oh. uh, to in order to release an accurate uh, movie historical movie or like uh, the bio of biography of um, a, a political character today to be sell in the United States all the time all the time everything I mean especially since 2001 when the America became more militant. You know, the, you cannot take a, you cannot really make a story critical of the United States. 
it's much harder. The films I used to do in the 90s, they're yeah. very uh, hard to make now. I made W about in 2008, but that was done independently, again, with European monies yeah. and some American money, but it was not a big hit. It was, and that was the story of George Bush and the invasion of Iraq. Those kind of movies you can't make. Everything has to be, I would say, patriotic. It has to be. It's all indirect. It's all indirect, but it starts with television in this country. We've become yeah. extremely rigid in some ways and patriotic and conservative by any standard. There is also something, I mean, uh, we have, as Chile, we have a very young public, <laughs> and everybody knows Oliver Stone and knows your movie. So there is a recommendation, something that you can tell to these young people who want to maybe be a director or want to look at you as an example, you know. I started with short films, and I think uh, in terms of becoming a director, to make a short film, a documentary at first, maybe, and a short film where you work with actors and you work with a script, mm -hmm. is, is always the best way to go. Uh, and uh, you learn from working one minute, two minutes, every minute counts. But that's the way I came up. I made four short films, and I worked my way up to a, I did a horror film, two horror films. I think uh, write your own stuff if you can. Okay, thank you well, so thank, much for your thank time. Thank you, dear. Nice to meet Bye. you. Bye, nice to meet you. Ciao, Hardcore.